today is a really hard day for me. I think it's time that I tell the truth. It's taken me a long time to come to terms with this, but it's time that I come clean to the world. I am a black, non-binary lesbian. That's the truth. Well, it, it's somebody's truth. It's not my truth, but it's someone's truth. But that's how easy it's become these days. People will believe you as long as you feel it and you give them a good enough performance. And if you believe that, well, we have a lot to talk about today. You can identify as anything as long as you feel it. So if you, as a full grown man, can identify as a woman, then I, as a gay man, can identify as a black non-binary lesbian. And if that's an issue for you, well, then you're just a bigot. In recent years, I think we've all noticed an influx in people questioning their gender. Your friend Nancy, who used to wear bows in middle school, now sounds like this, and is a non-binary named Brad. Or your friend Michael, who was a man his whole life, but after seeing people like Dylan Mulvaney get attention for nothing, is now Michelle. We live in a world where it's become both true that gender is real, but also deemed a social construct. Got it? Me neither. Anybody can identify as anything, regardless of whether it's based in science or not. Claim it, and Western society deems it good enough. And let me be clear, that's not an overestimation, because neo-pronouns are a thing. Pronouns like horse, horses. Today I'm going to show you how to use horse, horses pronouns in sentences. And please remember that someone did request these. And hi to the person that did request these, because I know you have been waiting a while. Or rar, rars. Today I'm going to show you how to use RAR RAR's pronouns in sentences. RAR XD taking on a whole new meaning. Many will argue that if you don't abide by these pronouns, if you don't affirm that it's possible based on feeling to be a horse, then you're an asshole. To do? Okay, huh. you cited freedom of speech in that. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. Well, I'm, I'm very glad I put you on the spot. <laughs> well, well, I'm very glad that I've no, exercised my, my point. Speech. You get my point. It's like you're, you're doing what you should do, which is digging a bit to see what the hell's going on. So and that you, is what you should do. But you're exercising you your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me. And that's fine. I think you, more power to you as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there and... I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean... Ha, gotcha. You have got me. You have got me. I'm trying to work that through time. my head. Dress a little feminine as a man and you're a woman. Drink a lot of beer as a woman and you're a man. Feel like a horse? then you're a horse. In the age where anyone can be anything, I think it's important to ask a few questions. Would it be okay for me to identify as black? Even though my skin color couldn't be more ghostly, would it be okay if my Ancestry.com said I was 15% black? With my realization that I'm a black non-binary lesbian, am I allowed to use the N-word? Or do you also get how stupid it sounds when I put it that way? You see, it's all become a delusion. The definition of truth used to be in accordance with fact or reality. Truth is now your truth, my truth, its truth, horse's truth. I find it very interesting how we as a society have come to accept that one can change their gender, but not something like their race. Can you change your gender? Um, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. Can you change your race? Uh, probably not, no. Can a person change their gender? Oh, It's yeah. a head scratcher. <laughs> that makes me sound, yeah, yeah, we'll go with yeah. Can a, can a person change their race, ethnicity? No. Can you change your gender? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Can you change your race? And when I say race, I mean ethnicity. Um, no, no, you can't, no. 
It's almost like we have some sort of common sense left over. Now, why can't we apply that backwards? Even when we see someone trying to darken their skin tone or change their hair texture, we can all recognize that that person isn't suddenly black. In fact, it's become a big no-no for celebrities or people to change their hair texture, hairstyles, or to tan too excessively. We see it time and time again where celebrities will get canceled for what has come to be known as blackfishing. Whether it's using makeup or tanner to be darker or wearing their hair in braids, it's a scandal. I'm seeing these photos from the campaign, the ones that we took, and people online are saying that I'm doing blackface, but I would never in a million years be disrespectful and do that. But what happens when it's taken a step further? What happens when we start to use words like identify? What happens when we start to base our reality off of what we feel inside? Many, many years ago, a woman named Rachel Dolezal went viral for making some very interesting claims. According to her, she was a black woman and you couldn't tell her any different. The problem with that was that Rachel was a Caucasian woman from Lincoln County, Montana. A woman that spent more than 10 years trying to convince people that she was black so that she could be chapter president of the NAACP. And for a while, she succeeded. Today, civil rights advocate Rachel Dolezal resigned from the NAACP after it was revealed she is a white woman masquerading as an African-American. John Blackstone is covering. For years before Rachel Dolezal became president of the Spokane chapter of the NAACP in January, she has been representing herself as black. That's right. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, headed by a white woman from Montana. Rightfully so, when the news broke out and Rachel went on interview after interview, every single person laughed at her, but not just laughed at her, people were outraged. Are you ashamed of being white? Well, like Dick Gregory says, white isn't a race, it's a state of mind. Okay, but you know, but no, no, let me tell you something, I'm black, I can't be you. I can't reverse myself. Right. To identify as Rachel. Yeah. Rachel. I think it's kind of hard because you're not black. So when you identify with it, there's a disconnect. You know what I mean? Like, you're not, you weren't born black. So when you say you are black, it makes it hard for people to understand where you're coming from. Right, and that's why I said I, I acknowledge I'm, yes. I was biologically born white to white parents. <laughs> Is that your dad? Yeah, that's that's my dad. This man right here is your father? Right there? Do you have a question about that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I was wondering if uh, <laughs> if your dad really is an African-American man. That's a very I mean, I don't I don't know what you're implying. Are you African-American? I don't I don't understand the question of I did tell you that yes, that's my dad. And you, he was unable to come in January. Are your parents I'm are not, they white? I, I re I re well I definitely am not white. I have really gone there with the experience in terms of being a mother of two black sons and really owning what it means to experience and live in blackness. Even as a white child growing up in Montana, she says she's identified as black, but was conditioned not to own it. From a very young age, felt a, I don't know, a spiritual, visceral, just very instinctual connection with um, black is beautiful. On MSNBC, she said she understands the anger, especially from black women. I would probably be enraged. I'd be mm -hmm. like, what the, you know, this person, how, how dare she? Mm -hmm. They don't know me. She says she's lived the life and knows who she is, no matter what anyone else thinks. In case you're not aware, white people can't become black because they're white. Nobody could change their skin color. Even when doing skin lightening treatments like bleaching, 
It just makes your skin lighter. It doesn't turn you into Effie Trinket from The Hunger Games. Even her parents came forward to discuss her background. Why is your daughter then pretending to be black? We can't answer that question for her. She has not explained to us why she is doing what she's doing and, and being dishonest and deceptive with her identity. We're just saying that we are, we're confirming the truth. We are her birth parents and we do not understand why she feels it's necessary to misrepresent her ethnicity. She says as a child, she preferred to draw pictures of herself using a brown crayon instead of a peach one. But her parents tonight say that's not true. This did not happen. Not at that early age. This is a fabrication. It's alarming that Rachel continues to make false statements mm -hmm. and have no acknowledgement that she has been doing that and it's become an issue. But regardless of who told her what, including her biological parents, Rachel never let it go. And Rachel insisted that she was trans black. But I do like the term trans black. And I think it's pretty clear why I bring her up. Everybody called her out for being crazy as fuck. And we all agreed that you couldn't change your race, that you can scrub off your skin tone, and that taking illegal drugs that make your skin darker doesn't make you black. It makes you darker, yes, ask Kim Kardashian, allegedly. Once you understand how Kim and other celebrities achieve this dark of a tan, you may just stop buying the tanning products, bronzers, body makeup, and expensive tanning sessions in order to emulate their look, as these are not the products responsible for celebrities' super dark tans. Take a look at how tan Kim looks in this recent Keeping Up reunion show. Kim allegedly uses tanning injections. Yep, you heard me right, tanning injections. The name of the substance she uses is called Melanotan 2. Melanotan 2 is an injectable peptide that mimics melanocyte stimulating hormone in your body. The hormone binds melanocortin receptors and stimulates the production of the pigment melanin in your skin cells. Of course, the more melanin you have, the darker your skin appears. So in layman's terms, this is a substance that goes into your body and encourages your cells to produce more of the pigment melanin, which will allow your skin to react to the sun in a way that produces a darker tan than if you didn't use the substance at all. But it doesn't make you black. It makes you a really sad, self-hating white woman who is being choked by her own white guilt. Let it go, y'all. Let the white guilt go. You can't help it that you were born white. You can't help it that 200 years ago, your ancestors were slaveholders, if that even is your history. Stop letting people convince you to hate yourself and stop pretending like a man who cut off his genitals is a woman. You may be comfortable calling said individual a trans woman, and as a libertarian, I believe in your right to do that, but that's not a woman. Nor am I any more of a woman because I am a gay man with a higher pitched voice than a straight man. But some of us have fallen for that. We all agree that taking drugs that make you darker doesn't make you black. But some of y'all insist that a man taking estrogen is a woman. Do you see the correlation? We are all much smarter than this. And pretending like the sky is purple is only going to make it more difficult for us to study gender dysphoria, what is said to cause transgenderism. If we all accept the facts of life, accept the fact that there are only two genders, male and female, and that there is no in-between, then we can find other medical ways to alleviate gender dysphoria, ways that don't include genital mutilation. But we can do that. If people like Dylan Mulvaney are pretending like they're on their 100th day of girlhood instead of acknowledging the truth. And that's objective truth. Not your truth, not my truth, the truth. So isn't it interesting when we compare Rachel Dolezal's failed attempt to convince the world she was black with Leah Thomas's rise to fame?
The world vehemently opposed Rachel Dolezal's outrageous and laughable claims of being trans black, yet we're spending actual time debating the trans sports and trans inmate debate. Leah Thomas is met with praise and applause by the woke media, while Leah's teammates express how uncomfortable it is to be in a locker room with someone that has male genitalia, and that is those who feel brave enough to speak out on this, because many of them do not. Some of them are doing interviews with their faces blurred out because they don't want to be canceled or have their careers in sports destroyed from the very beginning. Where are we as a society when we're prioritizing the safety of men in women's spaces instead of actual women? Those like Riley Gaines, who speak out on how outrageous this is, get attacked. They get followed through school and or attacked for speaking out. And the world allows it. We ridicule and make fun of the Rachel Dolezals of the world. But the man in the red lipstick? That's a no-brainer. Feelings are not facts. And one of the biggest reasons why the gender conversation is becoming so big is because of the self-ID problem. We talked about this in my interview with Shapeshifter and my interview with Brianna Ivey. But self-ID is pretty much exactly what it is. Self-identifying yourself. Instead of going through a medical professional who is actually going to give you a diagnosis, you just say, well, these are my feelings. This is how I feel. I identify as this. That's what self-ID is. That's how easy it is. It's all about living your truth. But I can assure you, you don't need to live your truth. You need a good therapist. Try that first. And let's be clear, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with going and getting yourself a little help. But before you get caught in a delusion, in something that is permanent, genital removal is permanent. There are permanent effects to taking hormone blockers. There are. There are permanent effects to taking estrogen and testosterone. So before claiming a permanent delusion that might not be right for you, let's get yourself a professional. Someone who can walk you through this. We've allowed people to assume the positions of medical professionals and it's wrong. It is very obviously causing issues. I think we've all fallen down a WebMD hole when we get a persistent cough. But rarely do any of us go to the doctor and ask them to affirm us in our diagnosis of throat cancer. Because that would be crazy, right? Yet Brianna told me in our interview that within 30 minutes, hormones had already been prescribed with a road to genital removal. All it takes is a claim and you're on your way. Besides how scary and dangerous it is that many make such decisions so young, like I mentioned earlier, the acceptance of this kind of delusion, the affirmation of this kind of thought process just brings on the invasion of women's spaces. We've already talked about the trans sport debate, but the trans inmate debate is much more dangerous. This is already starting to happen. If you can self-ID as transgender, you open the doors to a lot of unwanted things. If we become the medical professional, then stories like this are going to become impossible to avoid. Trans inmates being held in women's facilities and impregnating them. We already know what happens in men's prisons, women's prisons, which is why they are split, because the federal government doesn't want to become a daycare. Instead of seeing the obvious answer and possibly rounding up inmates for a trans facility, 
many world governments are going for a different option. Instead of just opening up a trans facility, they're going to just not put the ones with a violent track record in the women's spaces. Because we all know that only violent people have sexual urges. And you wouldn't believe that LGBT activists only called for these individuals to be split up after one of the trans people got beat up by a man. Because only when a biological man gets attacked do people care about women. Isn't it interesting how backwards that's become? Rachel Dolezal loses her job for pretending to be black, but Ron, now Rhonda, gets his own luxury jail cell. Feeling like you're something or identifying with something isn't good enough. We've established that. If you can identify as anything, then me, as a gay man, become invalidated in my sexuality. And this is something that we're seeing today because I can't use any dating app without seeing an obvious woman characterizing themselves as a man because they use he him pronouns. We went from love is love, men loving men, women loving women, just generally accepting people for who they loved, to it being expected of me as a gay man to like women because they identify as men. Rachel Dolezal identifies as black. Does that make her black? I think we all know the answer to that. If you can identify as anything, then a male rapist can identify as a woman and get into a woman's prison. This opens the door to too much. If you can pick your race, pick your gender, pick your genitals, then we have a problem. We're regressing as a society. If we can't identify something as simple as what a woman is, then how can we fight for women's rights? I identify as the president of the United States. Does that make me the president of the United States? We frown upon Rachel Dolezal for getting medical intervention to be darker, but we applaud children for taking puberty blockers. If me identifying as a black non-binary lesbian upset you, it should. And I'm hoping that it pokes holes in the gender ideology conversation for you and you start to see how ridiculous that is. You can be a trans man and you can be a trans woman, but you are not a man and you are not a woman. Biology is biology. Your feelings do not affect your DNA. This is common sense. Stop trying to convince yourself that you can shove a square in a triangle shaped hole. Rachel Dolezal was ahead of her time because had she made the claim she made in 2015 and 2024, she probably would have gotten away with it. And if you find that far-fetched, let's recognize how quickly this gender conversation has escalated. If you can convince yourself that Dylan Mulvaney is a woman, then you should believe me when I say that I'm a black non-binary lesbian. All right, y'all, over and out. If you like today's video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Affirm my identity in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you on the next one.